What's up YouTube? Cliff here from The Sunday Drive. Today, we're working on my 2014 Silverado with the 6L80 transmission. We're gonna show you how to drop the transmission pan, which is actually a huge pain, as you guys will see, change the transmission filter, and do a full fluid flush. This process is also similar on the 8L90 transmission, which is the eight-speed successor to my six-speed transmission, and it's also similar to previous transmissions made by GM as well. And here are the tools that we're gonna to be using today. 15 millimeter socket, a pick tool, ratchet wrench, some extensions, flat-headed screwdriver, 10 millimeter socket, some boards, we'll show you what those are for later, jack, ratchet strap, a funnel, a bottle jack, you're gonna need a lot of rags because it's gonna be messy, some cardboard to keep your driveway clean, half inch tube, three eighths inch tube, bucket, brake clean, and of course, some new transmission fluid. Step one drain as much of the fluid out of your transmission pan as you can. Now there's no drain plug like with your oil, that would be too smart. GM, why don't you do this? No, what we're gonna have to do is disconnect the cooling return line, the line that returns the cooled transmission fluid to your transmission and connect a rubber hose to that and feed it down to a catch pan. With that set up in place, we're gonna turn the truck on. This will activate the pump which will pump the fluid out of the transmission and into your catch pan. Now, some people have said that there is a thermostat in line with the transmission fluid and that the vehicle needs to be up to operating temperature to actually have this accomplished. Now, I had just driven my truck for about an hour, but it's been sitting for about 30 to 45 minutes before I attempted this and it came out all right. And we're gonna show you guys how to do that right now. On GM vehicles, you have these quick release uh, cooler lines on your transmission. We're gonna have to pop off this top plastic cover, pull that back, and then underneath of that, there's a retainer clip. And once you remove that, you better pull this line off. The one we're actually gonna be removing is the top line. I'm just demonstrating here, because it's a little easier to videotape. But we're gonna be removing this top line, which is the return line. Now they do sell tools that fit right around the retainer clip and will release it. A pick tool like this will work just as well. So here's the retainer clip. If you get your pick tool under here, you can release these prongs and it'll pull out. Now hold on to this, they usually don't sell these separately. There's retainer clips along your coolant lines for your transmission. Just pull the transmission line out of this one right here and there was a second one. You can see it clips together like that. Use a flat-headed screwdriver or pick tool to release it. With those clips released, have a catch pan ready. Just wiggle this back and forth. Now this will take a little bit of effort. I'm gonna take a rubber hose and stick that over the return line so that we can funnel it down into our catch pan. All right, so this is a half inch line that I'm using. And even though nothing should come out of it, just to be safe, you can take a 3 8 line and stick it into the transmission where you removed the coolant line. You can see the stream starting to slow down a little bit. All right, go ahead and shut it off. So we've went ahead and removed about five and a half quarts from the transmission. As you can see, the flow had significantly decreased from when we first turned on the truck and the fluid is pumping through. So that's what's next. We're gonna drop the transmission pan. As you can see, the exhaust snakes right across it. Great job, GM, another, another win right here, but um, it looks like, at first glance, there's enough room to lower down your transmission pan and slide it across the exhaust and fit it out. Unfortunately, there is not enough room. Uh, the way this is set up, you're gonna, we're gonna end up pulling the exhaust down as well as jacking the transmission up a little bit. We're gonna show you guys how to do that right now. We're gonna go ahead and remove the two 15 millimeter nuts that are located inside this supporting cross member. This will release the transmission and allow us to jack it up just a tiny bit, which will give us some more flexibility removing the pan. All right, so we're gonna jack to the bottom of the transfer case and we're not gonna go up more than about an inch just because of some of the lines that run above it. We don't wanna pinch those between the body and the transmission. Now, because of the clearance issues, we need to pull the exhaust down to give us a little more space in addition to jacking up the transmission. So what we've done is taken a couple blocks of wood and set up a bottle jack. And all the bottle jack is doing is basically holding these blocks of wood to the ground so that we can then use a ratchet strap wrapped around the bottom board and around the exhaust right at the joint right after the second catalytic converter 
and we're just ratcheting that down to pull the exhaust in. Now this isn't gonna move a ton, but every little bit counts with this. You're gonna have just enough room to squeeze that transmission pan out. Now that we've created more of a gap between our exhaust and the transmission pan, we're gonna go ahead and remove all these 10 millimeter bolts. Now what I'm gonna do is work back towards a single corner and when I have one bolt left, I'm gonna just loosen that last bolt so this will tip down and then when I've made sure that everything's drained out that I can, I'll remove that last bolt. There's three bolts left and as you can see, it started to drain a little bit out. Don't go chasing waterfalls, listen to the- All right, so can we fit this out? Find out next time on Dragon Ball Z. Got it. Nice. Yeah, piece of cake. I don't know why everyone made such a big fuss about this. All right, now we're gonna just pull down and twist to remove the filter. We got the pan out, guys. So that was a bit of a pain, but it is out of the vehicle now. Definitely needed to pull the exhaust down as well as jacking up the transmission. I don't think there would be any way to get it out of there without doing both of those things. And even with that, it was still extremely tight. Here's the filter the gasket. Now there was still about just under five quarts left in the pans. Now, initially I thought when we ran the pump, we would have removed most of the fluid from the pan. Now it's possible if I continued running the pump, I would have removed more. However, the flow had slackened off significantly. I was kind of worried about running the pump dry. Not a problem because we still wanted to remove all this fluid and we got it out just a little bit messier than how I wanted it to be. Now the truck takes about 14 quarts, give or take. There's some variation I've seen online. Amsoil says it takes about 12.8, but I've been reading online that people have used 14. So have a little extra fluid on hand. So if it takes 14, there's still about four quarts left in the vehicle. Some of that's probably still in the transmission in some places and the torque converter. That's probably holding most of it. So what we're gonna do now is clean this up, reinstall everything and fill the pan back up. And then we're gonna run the pump again until we see the fluid color change. All right, so to clean up your pan, the first thing you wanna go ahead and do is remove your magnet and clean that up. That just catches any of the filings. This is actually in pretty good shape. A Little bit of gunk on there, but nothing I'd be concerned about. I don't see any metal filings. Next, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and inspect your gasket. Now this is reusable, but I would always recommend having a extra gasket on hand just in case this gets damaged in the process or you take it off and you realize it's worn down and needs to be replaced. So go ahead and inspect that. I'll leave the part number for the replacement gasket in the description of this video. Also have the part number for the new filter. So I'm just using a little bit of brakeling to spray this off. When cleaning the mating surface right here on your transmission pan, you wanna make sure that this is completely smooth. It doesn't have any etches in it. Never use a metal tool to clean off this edge. If you ever get a cut in it, that could compromise the seal. All clean. Go ahead and reinstall your magnet right on this nub right there. Nice satisfying click. Now when you go to reinstall your gasket, there are two guiding uh, kind of like pins or nubs that stick off of it. Just line those up with the appropriate holes. Now you're first gonna wanna hand tighten all of these bolts. Don't use any sort of torque on these until you're sure that they've threaded incorrectly. You don't wanna cross thread anything. It's important to follow this pattern so that the gasket seats evenly between the pan and the transmission. Go ahead and wipe down the surface here. Just make sure that's nice and clean. All right, so go ahead and install your filter. So just a little tip that I found makes this a little bit easier. Remove the gasket, uh, have it on here, but remove it from on top of the pan so that it doesn't get jammed up and torn as you put it on. Also, you wanna kinda twist this on in this orientation and then slide it around like that. That seemed to be the best way to get it on and off because the low point is right here in this back corner. All right, now that those are all hand tight, go ahead and torque them down following the pattern. 
And then just go back and recheck them all, make sure you didn't miss any. All right, we're gonna go ahead and fill it up now with ATF fluid. We're using AMSOIL's ATF, full synthetic, and we're gonna fill this up through the dipstick. Now you definitely wanna make sure you do not overfill your transmission. So keep in mind how much you've removed. When you check the fluid level, the transmission needs to be at operating temperature and the truck obviously needs to be level. We've added nine quarts back into the transmission. So a little bit less than we took out, but we wanna be careful not to overfill it. What we're gonna do now is turn the vehicle on, let the pump run to get as much fluid out of the torque converter as we can. Now this isn't absolutely necessary at this point. We've already replaced between nine and 10 quarts, but if you wanna to try to get as much fluid out, this is their next step. All right, so we just left the truck in park and we just removed about two more quarts. You can still see it's pretty black, but it was just starting to get red at this point. So guys, you can see on my finger right there, it's a nice red, clean transmission fluid. So I think we've done a pretty good job of flushing the system. Never gonna get 100% out, but we are pretty darn close. So gonna go ahead and top off the system, drive the truck for a little bit, park it on a level surface, and then check it. All right, I just took for the truck for a drive to get the transmission warmed up. Obviously, you wanna make sure your fluid level is close to full before you do that. And one trick I've learned, if you're having a hard time telling the fluid level, spray this with a little brake lean because that'll get this completely clean. All right, now you wanna make sure your truck is level when you check. They have a cold mark right there and a hot mark right here. So we've warmed it up. So we wanna be inside this hot section right here, inside the hot zone. So what I'm gonna do now is drive it back home and check the oil level and make sure it's still in there. That's it guys. Well, I don't know if I should say that's it. That was pretty hard, but that is how you change your transmission fluid, filter, and drop the pan on your GM vehicle. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Consider subscribing. There's a lot more content on the channel on my truck. A uh, couple things to keep in mind. If you do have the 6.2 liter, you do not have a dipstick. Just something to note. Um, but we will see you guys here next time, and thanks for watching.